like to call to order the May 3rd Tax Increment Finance Board meeting. Um, uh, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Um, I'll call the roll. City Council President LeBeau. Here. Uh, Board of Assessor Chairman Richie Gonzalez. Here. Um, Frank Marcioni. Present. City Administrator Seth Aiken. Present. City Councilor Sean Kadeem. Here. Um, and City Councilor Linda Pereira. She was going to zoom in, so maybe she'll join us shortly. Um, citizens' input. Um, we have one letter from Colin Dias of Ray Street and Fall River. Good afternoon, members of the Tax Increment Finance Board. I respectfully ask this board what is the reason for the amendments to the TIF agreements as laid on the agenda. I hear that there were changes are not major in nature. However, why won't the board release what these changes are? Why is 64 Durfee Street even being considered for a TIF? This is an abandoned building that is, that is absolutely offering no con contribution to Fall River or the taxpayers. What are we going to do with 64 Durfee Street? Turn it into market rate housing? I am mainly concerned about this proposed amendment because the owner of this LLC has donated over the maximum amount to Mayor Paul Coogan's campaign fund. We have made illegal donations being made to the mayor, and now this person wants favorable action by the tip board. Who is the mayor the chair of? This seems much like a quid pro quo. I asked the board to simply disclose to the public what kind of amendment is being made and what impact it will have on the taxpayers. Fall of the deserves better. Thank you, Colin Dias. That's the only letter we have tonight in citizens' input. I'll now ask for a motion to approve the minutes of Tuesday, April 5. Um, can I get a motion to second? Simple second. I have a motion to second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. I'll now turn it over to um, Attorney Matt Thomas to describe item six on your agenda, a proposed amendment of a tax increment exemption agreement by and between Mechanics Mill 1 LLC and the City of Fall River dated May 7, 2015. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm actually filling in for uh, NB, uh, for Bristol County Economic Development, which would normally be doing this. But um, we're here before you on two um, amendments, and um, the first one is for Mechanics Mill. Um, the amendment for Mechanics Mill, and, and I should note that these are primarily technical amendments just to clean up the tiff, the ties um, as we go forward. So um, there was a tie agreement executed with Mechanics Mill on May 7th of 2015, and under that tie agreement, they anticipated developing the top three floors of Commonwealth Landing into residential housing, market rate residential housing. The bottom two floors uh, were intended to be commercial. Um, subsequent to uh, the tie being executed, in May of 2016, they took the building condominium. And so the top three floors became condominium unit two, the bottom two floors were condominium unit one. When they did this, they didn't, through inadvertence, um, because these were among the earliest of the ties, and I don't think people really were up to speed on how these things are supposed to be managed, they didn't come to the city first to seek permission to do that, as they should have. They then conveyed the second floor to Mechanics Mill 2, which is owned by the same people, but they did, Mechanics Mill 2 owns the t Unit 2, which is the top three floors, Mechanics Mill 1 owes owns the bottom uh, two floors, which is unit one. When they went condominium, and this is similar to what happened down at South Coast Marketplace, it changes the nature of the tie in that the project is now only defined by the top three floors, not by the whole project, or not, not the whole property. So what the tie amendment in front of you does, and I'll just walk through it, starting on the second page, the first thing is that the city grants permission to Mechanics Mill 1 to convert the property to a condominium unit, a condominium, 
and to convey unit two to mechanics mill two. Nunc pro tunc is a Latin phrase which basically means now for then. So by doing it nunc pro tunc, you're doing it now. It takes effect as if you had done it originally back in 2016. Um, number two, uh, the, we assent to the assignment of the tie from mechanics mill one to mechanics mill two. That's required under the terms of the tie as well, and that's also done nunc pro tunc. Then in number three, what we do is we um, add the words a portion of in front of property because it was talking about the property. The property is defined in the tie to be the entire property, commercial and residential. We're making it clear that this is only on a portion of it. We define, uh, we add a new um, definition after MRRU in the tie and before property, adding in the definition of project, which is that condominium unit two. We also change the name of the sponsor from Mechanics Mill 1 to Mechanics Mill 2. Uh, in number six, we strike out the set the language that's there, which talked about rehabilitation of the property and make it rehabil rehabilitation of the project. Um, in number seven, we replace the word property with project. As you can say, this is basically technical. In eight, we change the word property to project. Number nine is a little bit more of a substantial change. When the tie was originally negotiated and executed, it inadvertently listed the base value as 3.6 million. That was the entire property value. The base value for a tie is only the residential portion. And in fact, as we've been managing this tie over the years, we've actually been using this base value of 1,106,910. So this cleans that up in the language. Number 10 takes the assignment language, which is in the tie right now, which basically consists of the first one, two, three, four, five, six lines, which basically says that if they're going to assign it to somebody, the city has to approve first. We add the remaining language, which is very similar to most financing agreements, which basically says that if their lender forecloses on the property, the lender can sell it to somebody, and that assignment automatically happens if the lender's foreclosing their rights. Um, number 11. Uh, what we do in number 11 is we change the name of the um, sponsor to Mechanics Mill 2. Number 12, we add this Exhibit A on the back, which is the confirmation of um, valuation sheet. And this has been updated as well to include Mechanics Mill 2. And in number 13, um, we add some language in the Exhibit 2, which is the definition of the property and make it clear that this is only applying to Unit 2 of the condominium. Um, I also have before you a draft resolution, um, which um, after we I answer any questions you may have, if you want to vote, uh, what the resolution does is it approves the submission to the um, condominium, it approves the conveyance of condominium 2, it approves this amendment, and it recommends that the Forest City Council approve the amendment and authorize the mayor as the chairman of the Tax and Financing Board to execute it in a form acceptable to the Corporation Council. Um, I apologize for so many changes, but we were trying to clean this up once and for all. Assuming you vote to uh, approve it, it would go to the City Council. Assuming the Council votes to approve it, it would then go to DHCD for their approval. It becomes effective upon DHCD approval. <coughs> I can answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions about this time from Mechanics Mill? Just Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Kadeen. Just in terms of, so, and I apologize if you said this, seven and eight, so property versus project. What's the significance of the word change? So the property is defined as being the entire property at 1082. Yeah. It includes the second, the condominium unit two, condominium unit one, all the property. What we've done is the tie can't apply to commercial property. It can only apply to the residential. So we change that to project, and we define project as being condominium unit two, which is the residential units. Okay. Thus the 1.1 million. Thus the 1.1 million. And then so what's the, um, as it currently stands, so if this wasn't approved, is there, or I should say if, if this moves forward and is approved, either way you want to look at it. Right. 
what's the tax implication? Is there a tax implication moving forward? No, outside because, of the, the no, tie in no, terms because, of how it's assessed or anything of that nature. No, because what we've been doing is, I real I found this problem about three years ago, and when I found it three years ago, we met with um, the sponsors with Mechanics Mill One and Two, explained to them the problem, and we changed the base value of the one point one million back then. Mm -hmm. We just haven't got we hadn't had an opportunity to change the paperwork. So this is going to continue the assessment as it's been done for the past three years. But it doesn't in impact the assessment going forward in terms of total valuations once the tie is, is completed? Not like at that. all. Um, it still runs through. I think we're in year five now, which is the last 80% year. Mm -hmm. Starting in, in year six, it goes down to 20% for the remaining five years. Okay. So that Any yields. Thank you. Anything further on this one? So then, Mayor, the, if that's the case, then you would ask for a motion to approve this resolution. I'm, I'm looking for a motion and a second on this resolution. Second. I, I needed a motion oh. first. You have the motion. Can I get right. a second? Motion. Second. I got a motion to second. Any further discussion? I'll call the roll. City Council President? Yes. Um, Richard Gonzalez? Yes. Frank Marcioni? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, always uh, need to make a disclosure. I am the president of Bristol County Economic Development Consultants. I had no input uh, in the preparation of this document. I vote yes. City Administrator Seth Aiken? Yes. City Councilor Sean Cadeen? Yes. Linda Pereira? Item number seven is. The proposed amendment for the tax increment exemption agreement by and between 64 Durfee LLC and the City of Fall River, dated 2018. Attorney Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is a much simpler amendment. So, 64 Durfee is actually complete. I must have. Uh, temporary certificate of occupancy was issued in December uh, for most of the units not including the lofts. So what um, this does is, again, this cleans up the tie to bring it into conformance with what was actually done. So for example, in number one, again, we change, we insert the word a portion of the property. And that's because at 64 Durfee, you have 44 units of market rate residential. You have 11 units of studio which are affordable, um, and then you have 9,000 square feet of commercial space. So that 9,000 square feet of commercial space and the 11 units of affordable are not included in this tie, only the 44 units of the market rate. So we have to add that phrase in, again, portion of the property uh, for what it applies to. And number two, uh, we make it clear that we add that definition of project again. And so the project is only the market rate units, those 44 units of market rate. Um, just so you know, the market rate, well, we'll get to that in a sec. Um, the next thing I do in number three is we clean it up again to substitute project for property. Number four makes it clear that there are 55 residential units being built there. 44 of them are market rate. And of the 44, there's one three bedroom, 29 two bedrooms, 14 one bedroom, and uh, then the remainder, which is not listed here because it's not part of the tie, are the 11 units of studios and the 9,000 square feet. Number five, we again, it's similar to the, um, the mechanics mill tie, we substitute project for property. Number six, we do the same thing. Number seven, it, the tie had originally listed 100% MRRU, so it said that 100% of the units were market rate. They're not. 11 are affordable of the total development, which means that it's only 80%. And so what will happen here is the increment that they get is going to be the difference of value between the base value and the investment in all of the residentials. And that difference, that difference will then be multiplied times 80% before the 80% exemption is applied to it because the exemption only applies to the market rate units. Uh, number eight, um, what happened with this one is through inadvertence. This year the assessor's office got confused 
by the fact that a temporary certificate of occupancy had been issued. And so they applied the 80% exemption, which they couldn't do, because you can't apply the exemption until DHCD has issued final certification, which happens after the final certificate of occupancy. So they had applied one year of the tie already. So what we're doing is we're amending this to make it clear that the tie exemptions begin next year. Um, it turned out as a wash in the assessment side of this because of some inaccuracies on the calculations as well. And so an agreement was reached between uh, the city and the sponsor that there would be no abatements granted, there'd be nothing additional owed, everybody's moving on into the next year. Number nine is the same assignment language as there is in Mechanics Mill. Number 10 adds the same Exhibit A. Um, it's just, it just refers to Durfee. And number 11 cleans up the language in Exhibit uh, 2 to the tie, explaining that the property is really only those residential units, the project, not the rest of the property. Sorry, Attorney Thomas, why is there no base right now? Oh, there is. Um, I didn't change the base. Um, on the new one here, oh. it, the, the base value hasn't been changed. It's still one hundred fifty-one thousand dollars. That was the, the that was the assessed value of that property two years ago. Okay. One hundred fifty-one thousand um, dollars. One hundred fifty-one thousand. Yeah, that's what the assessed value is, and that's what it stayed at. So what will happen is, now, the affordable housing properties, which have an affordable housing rider through, um, uh, through the city through Mike Dion's office, and the 9,000 square feet of commercial space will be assessed as normal. Mm -hmm. uh, the market rate units would get an 80% exemption starting next year as this goes forward. And my understanding is they've started um, renting it. Um, my understanding is that the final certificate of occupancy is supposed to issue in the next couple of weeks, and they anticipate... Um, going to DHCD for final certification uh, before June 30th. As the councilors will remember, last year um, we adopted, uh, we basically became a conquered community. So June 30th is the valuation date. So as long as that's done before June 30th, then the tie would begin this coming July 1st. Okay, mostly technical amendments to clean this up. We're trying to go through this with all the tiffs and ties to make sure that they're all in conformance where they should be. So I can answer any questions you may have, Mr. Mayor. Anybody have any questions? Council President. I just have one on item four. Yep. We're striking 3B. It's a difference in unit 3B on the original is 42. And I apologize if you said it. 42 residential rentals and you're changing it to 55? Yeah, so what we do there is the original tie said 42 residential units. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're saying it's 55, of which 44 are now MMR, MRU, MR, uh, market rate residential units. Of that 44, one is a three bedroom, 29 are two bedrooms, and 14 are now one bedrooms. So in their original plan when this was built, was it built for 42? Or they had 55? originally planned for 42, and when they did the work, they were able to restructure it so that they were able to get 44 market rate units out of it. They added a one bedroom and they added a three bedroom. <coughs> okay, but the total. Well, that's what's going to be changed. That total's wrong. Correct. Okay. So that's what we were cleaning up. There were originally 55 residential units being planned <coughs> originally. Okay, that's what I was looking for. And that was the issue. And they didn't know what the, what the mix was going to be. And that happens a lot with these things. As you get in there and they're converting these buildings, you, you're able to pick up a couple. The benefit here is they added market rate units not affordable units. So, it's a, in the long range, it's better for the city. Thank you, Aguilar. So I'm sorry. Um, so the current amount is 55 or 47? <coughs> so there's 55 total current. units. Okay. 11 are affordable, 44 are market rate, mm -hmm. and that's the breakout yep. of the 44. Okay. And then just in terms of number eight, when you mentioned, um, I believe it was number eight, <clears throat> That the tie was applied a year earlier? Right. What was, I guess, what was the value of that? Well, so what that? happened was this. When they applied the tie, they actually set a value of the property right around $5 million. 
and then applied the tie of 80%, and that mm -hmm. brought it down. They used the wrong assessment date and applied the wrong amount to it. When you went back and looked at what it really should have been, it was off by about $1,000. They paid that tax on that, and then they applied for an abatement. They wanted it to go lower. Mm -hmm. We told them they're not getting the abatement. We're not going to go after them for the extra $1,000. Let's just call it a day and move on. So the, the total amount we were talking about just... It was a wash. It was, so it was $1,000 just so everybody... About 1000 It wasn't massive. Okay. Because they had used the wrong assessment date, yep. as I understand it from the assessors. And there again, we've talked to the building department about this. Developers would love to see temporary certificates of occupancy. It's great. They want to get people in the building. Mm -hmm. The trouble with that is when you're dealing with a TIF and a tie, those are trigger dates when they issue those certificates of occupancy. Right. So there has to be closer coordination between the two offices when that happens to make sure that somebody's not taking an inadvertent action based off of a temporary. Um, so we're going to try to be developer, you know, reasonable to the developers, but we want to make sure that the city collects what it's supposed to collect. Richie, and do you uh, anybody else agree have with all that? And if I, if I can ask you since... Yeah, no, no, no. We, we sat in on some of the meetings. And uh, basically, that's that's what was drawn out, mm -hmm. and and the whole key goes back to the occupancy permit, right. the temporary. Once they see it, they think it's live, and they go ahead and assess it, not realize it. it's a temp. Uh, Mr. just so you know, on this, sure. when we deal with an abatement on something like this, that's a really big issue. We always bring the abatement to the assessors, the board of assessors discuss it with them in executive session and only act after they give us the okay. So that they, they're, they're, they're the board. We want to make sure there's full transparency. Of course, yeah, that's why I'm going to say the head honcho here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no. <laughs> thanks, Frank. Anything further? Sure. Motion to adopt. Second. I have a motion and a second. I'll call the roll. Council President LeBeau. Chairman of the board, Richie Gonzalez. Yes. Frank Marcioni. Uh, yes, and once again, I am the president of the Bristol County Economic Development Consultants. And as you can see, I had no input or analysis in uh, the drafting of this. City Administrator Seth Aiken. Yes. City Councilor Sean Kadeem. Yes. Councilor Linda Pereira. And I voted yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Any new business to come before the board? Nope. Any old business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 Motion yeah. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, attorney. Thank you all. Aye.